what is it that you want to take away from here? Can we have you, please? It's OK. You know, you are anyways be the chosen one. <laughs> so please come. Thank you. So as I understand, I should speak uh, the challenges that my organization is facing. And uh, uh, you also said, put my heart out. It's already kind of nervous, yeah. So I'm from Bosch. And uh, so I'm leading the agile transformation journey for Bosch. And currently, uh, as far as the challenges are concerned, uh, it's working in some pockets and it's not working in other pockets. So some leaders who are agile, if I can use that term, uh, they are uh, very, very flexible in adopting either Scrum or Kanban or XP. And there are others who say, no, no, it's not going to work. Who are you to tell us? You know, we, we have seen it all. So we are uh, focusing on uh, adopting a early adopters model so that we publish the success stories of those who, has walked, who have walked the path. Uh, however, it's not easy for us because it's very challenging to uh, motivate us so that we are there when we uh, hear a no from the leader, it kind of demotivates us. Uh, and uh, so I am doing it single-handedly. There's nobody who reports to me. It's only a volunteer work that works. Uh, so I have to influence people. Uh, I have to share the same purpose and influence people, which mostly does not work. So sometimes pe some people give their bandwidth. Uh, and whenever it's a critical requirement from their project, then they don't. So in the end, I end up seeing there are lots of initiatives who, which start. But out of 10, let's say only one initiative uh, culminates with a logical conclusion. This is what it is, yeah. I, I, though I do not want to direct the conversation, but I really have a question. So the question is, what actually works, you know, for bringing that transformation in any organization? What works? So mostly what organizations do, that they bring consultants. But what do you think, what actually works? Can someone? Hello everyone, I'm uh, Archana. I really don't know what actually works. <laughs> uh, but uh, one thing what I consider uh, works for me sometimes is uh, when I try to talk to people and understand from their point of view how we can achieve something. Like I can go to the example recently. We follow Scrum and I have a team which follows Kanban. And uh, I have one team which follows uh, nothing. Okay, so and uh, suddenly we said, okay, for this team also, we'll start the scrum methodology, we'll start everything, slowly we'll get into that process. But suddenly we got an email from CEO saying in one week, I want this completed, I have already promised the customer. So now there was chaos, like people coming in and saying, you are saying scrum, you'll say there will be planning, you'll give me some time to estimate and we'll get into the process. But now I don't have any time, one week is the like fix it time wherein I have to finish everything and move on. So this is what happened literally. So that is when I told them, we will not follow anything. I will not come up with any scrum or Kanban or anything. You let me know how you can work. And I will support you the way you want me to. So that is how it worked for us. And uh, within one week of time, people spent more time. I mean, they stayed in office all nights and they finished their work. But later on, the next week, we gave them an off. That is what that was what I could do from my side, talking to the management and saying, okay, you work now and take it off once that is done. So I mean, many a times, I mean, what we think in a process way may not work is what is my understanding. It is about how people cope up with the situation that time. And uh, there is one more thing. And when we came into process also, uh, our entire organization follows Scrum. For one particular team, we changed it to Kanban because Scrum was not working for them because there were multiple uh, changes and uh, things which we had started. We couldn't plan anything there. We had uh, kind of requests from here and there, a lot of ad hoc requests and stuff. So, but when there is an audit, so when there is an audit, they look in for things, right? Like if it is, okay, we are all following Scrum, we need a planning meeting, okay, you at least show me the schedule when you scheduled it and things like that. But when we said we are following Kanban, she said, okay, give me the process. What are you following in <laughs> Canva? So these are the practical challenges I face daily. Though we say we follow a process, maybe a process may not work out for us. And if we change from one to the other, um, sometimes 
I mean, it might be working for the team, but convincing an auditor or convincing a management will be difficult. Those are the two examples which I faced. One wherein we got an input from CEO saying we have to finish it, and the other one wherein we had a problem to convince an auditor. So, so those were the two things uh, which I would like to share. Thank you. Hi, this is Rangnath. So one is uh, some of the team members uh, mentions that mention that uh, as well is as an excuse, let's say the same example, whatever she was saying, right? So if we have some uh, hard deliverable to meet, they will say that we are following Azel, we cannot deliver by this time. So Azel doesn't mean that we cannot deliver something on time, right? Whatever adds value, that can be delivered, definitely. So that's a kind of mindset, right? That needs to be changed. And the second thing is, even the management, senior man management also needs to think about the as I, unless they are familiar with that process, they will not understand what the team is following. So that's the same challenge she has faced, right? So th those are the couple of examples I want to share. Thank you. My name is Anand, and uh, I work with all of them in the table. We all work together. I'll, I'll just um, quote you one uh, example about the recent uh, surgical strikes we had. So the guys who did the surgical strikes are not MBA, right? They're not MBA, they're not read in Harvard University, probably they have just about 10th pass, right? But what is that made, what was the thing that made the surgical strike experiment such a successful one? They don't do surgical strikes every day. They don't practice surgical strikes every day. They don't go to the Pakistan soil, fire and come every day. But how did they do it with such precision? Something that they've never done before, how are they able to do it such with such precision? I think that's the big difference between what happens in an organization here to what happens in an Indian army there. Okay, uh, what happens in an army is everybody who joins the Indian army have to undergo boxing. Strange, isn't it? Boxing. But why? The way how they have to do boxing is they have to get up at 4 in the morning, run for about 5 kilometers. When they are extremely tired, they have come to hit the sandbag now. You have to hit the sandbag in such a way that it travels a certain distance and comes back. And you have to hit it so hard second time because there is a momentum in the first time. So you have to hit it again and again, again and again till the time you can't lift your hand anymore. Then you're supposed to fall on the ground. But you're not supposed to fall on the ground and take rest. You have to keep your hand here like this on the ground. There is a circle, rotate the circle. Ten times. Get up, hit the back, fall, rotate ten times. Nobody knows why we are doing this. Nobody asks a question in army, why the hell am I doing this? And nobody understands the philosophy behind that exercise. But what happens in real time is when they go for a personal combat, that's when, when, the, when the opponent or when your enemy hits us, they fall on the ground and then they don't fall, they rotate 10 times, get up and hit 10 more times till your enemy is out. This is what is called muscle memory. Unfortunately here, we don't have, as coaches, we don't have the power to teach muscle memory. Second, the second question is, when they went for the surgical strike, everybody did the job perfect. Why? They're not MBA, they don't have grand plans, they don't have PPTs. They don't have anything of that sort. But how did they succeed? It is only because of something called commander's intent. They understand everything. Commander's intent. What was any idea what was the commander's intent of the Mumbai terrorist attack when the NSG commandos came? Zero civilian casualty. That's all. Does it require MBA or say, Harvard University degrees to understand this? No. So, and everything was a chaotic that day, that particular day. So they learned in chaos. So the only thing that we have to do in organization is allow people to learn in chaos, provide a good commander intent where everybody can understand. I think Ajay will be successful. Thank you. Hi, uh, good afternoon. My name is Satya Narayan. Work with the same team, uh, Ajay Coach and Phillips. So, uh, uh, for me, you know, irrespective of these frameworks, we talk about Scrum, Save. TDD, it's a means to achieve a business result. Most of the time, the organization, the practitioners, or the coaches, or the scrum master, they give a lot of focus on these practices as the framework, and they forget the business goals. This is the means to achieve the business goals. The second thing, the most important thing is, it, it is a mental model, right? It's a mindset. We need to understand how Agile is going to work. The first thing is, as a coach, we need to create the belief system in the organization, right? See, I would like to quote the you know, 3B model, which generally we talk about, right? The first thing is belief. Let's say 
if, if I believe in God, I go to a temple, right? My behavior is totally different. And if a guy who is non-believer in God, he go to a temple, his behavior is going to be totally different. The most important is creating that belief system. The first B is that, based on the belief, my behavior is going to come into picture, right? If I believe, if I go into a, you know, an improvement exercise or a workshop, my behavior is going to be totally different. If I go to a daily stand-up, if I go to a retrospection, my behavior is going to be different because I believe that this is a forum to make improvement, right? As a coach, as a scrum master, we need to, you know, build that belief system based on that the behavior will come into picture. Based on your behavior and belief system, your business will come into picture. So the most thing, most important thing, create that mindset in the organization, right from your leadership, right? Always the stuff, right? If I want to, you know, look at, you know, uh, if I want to categorize into your leadership, middle management and team, we can easily deal with the team, we can easily lead with the leadership team. The most difficult portion is your middle management, right? Praveen, agree? Yeah. Right? So, it is very important for us to, you know, spend good amount of time, change that mindset, right? And also, <clears throat> you know, um, I, I personally believe when we coach, you know, especially to address these kind of mindset, right? In any organization, you know, let's say, you know, we have 10 people in a team, or if you take a bigger, you know, enterprise like 400, 500,000 people, there are 10% of the people, right, are very optimistic people. The moment you go and say something, I want to do this change, can we try something like this? They say, yeah, why, yes, why not? Let's try. Another 10% of the population, the other side, are very pessimistic people. The moment you go and say, can we try this? No, 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 this is not going to work. We tried it uh, six months ago, one year ago, this is not going to work, right? In between, about 70 to 80 percent of the population are called fence sitters. Whichever side is powerful, they will go inclined towards them. So it is very important for us to identify the 10 percent of the population who are very optimistic, very aggressive, right, win their confidence so that the fence sitter will go towards them when about 80 and 80 percent of the population is, you know, about with you, the transformation become like a cakewalk. That's about it. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Everyone, my name is Swami. I'm from All Skips. Okay, so basically, when I joined All Skips, I was from the non-agile. Uh, we were practicing only the you know waterfall model. When I get into this company, so it's I can't say 100% agile, and most of the teams follow agile. And uh, the the what are the challenges we faced, and how did we overcome? Uh, let me share a couple of things as we. We do follow the scrum, where in which we, as a team, we estimate the story points, whatever, and come to the, you know, stand up and the sprint planning. And the biggest challenge what we had is, how do we stop carrying these story points or the work from one sprint to the next sprint? So end of the day, have we delivered what we are supposed to deliver? That's the question we follow, waterfall model or agile, that was the biggest challenge. Am I delivering what I am supposed to deliver? Is my release is on track or out of track? So that's the leadership ask. You have to answer for that. So what we did is, so initially, there are a lot of user stories are getting carried forward to the next sprint uh, because of so many so there are so many impediments or there are a lot of dependencies kind of thing and. We are not clear with the requirement and the re-estimation kind of things. So in order to overcome, what we did is, the one best thing is, uh, we didn't call for a pre-sprint planning meeting or kind of a thing. So we have given the freedom for each developer or a QA to pick up the user story and revisit the acceptance criteria and re-estimate it, whether it's suppose if the user story is estimated as 10 story points, go back and tie it up with your QA team, go through the acceptance criteria, estimate it with 20%, 30%, depends on, come up with a justification. Why do, do you really need 10 days or is it required for 8 days or maybe 15 days? Okay, if it is a 15 days, come up with a justification and end of the day, before you come to the sprint, there is a goal. As a developer or a QA, what is your goal for this sprint? The transformation here is 
from the regular sprint to a goal based sprint for a particular person qr developer so he has to define the goal so, so our sprint planning today especially for our team will not take more than an hour okay sprint planning okay so the transformation what we did is so we have transferred from regular sprint planning to a goal based sprint planning where in which the team will the 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 developer or qa will decide what is going to achieve if not there will there there should be a proper justification to that and it's working fine we don't have any impediments and sorry we are not